AMD's Ryzen juggernaut continues to bulldoze its way across the PC ecosystem and having delivered 6, 8, 12 and even 16 core processors, Team Red is shifting its gaze towards the more budget end of the stack and the implications for gaming are intriguing. The new Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X deliver 4 physical cores with 8 threads, a first for the Zen 2 architecture. And here's the thing. Intel's quad-core chips dominated gaming for years, and the Core i7, 6700K and 7700K are still held up even today as strong gaming performers. AMD is comparing Ryzen 3 gaming performance to the 7700K, suggesting that the 3300X in particular is as good, if not better. All of which raises the question, have we now reached the point where a budget processor can reach that threshold of performance. As I said, the implications here are fascinating, as this suggests that the 3300X is up there with a 6-core, six 6-thread six i5. What I find even more intriguing about these processors is that, for my money, AMD already makes the most impressive budget CPU on the market. The firm actually keeps its older generation processors available and gives them impressive price cuts. So the Ryzen 5 2600, 6 cores, 12 threads, is already competitive with the 3300X and has more physical cores. Meanwhile, there's the curious case of the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Priced at under $100, I've seen it as low as $85, it's not a first-gen Ryzen at all, despite the name. It's actually a 2600 with a tiny clock speed cut, which is so slight it basically benches the same as a 2600 anyway. So I actually think there's a strong possibility here that AMD's biggest competition in the budget CPU space may actually be itself. You'd need to look to other features like PCI Express 4.0 support to see Ryzen 3000 bring new features into this space already when performance is already looking pretty strong there. Okay then, the Ryzen 3 3100, 3300X, let's see what we can see. Both are equipped with SMT, meaning you're getting, as I said, 4 cores and 8 threads. 3.6 GHz base clock on the 3100, 3.8 on the 3300X. It's a bit more of a difference on the boost side of things though. Quite a gap there then, but there are other differences too, most notably in terms of core-to-core -core communication. The Zen 2 die consists of two quad-core clusters. 3100 uses two cores from each cluster, the 3300X uses all cores from a single cluster, so in theory there will be faster core-to-core -core communication on the 3300X. Both chips, however, get an impressive 16 megabytes of L3 cache. I'm not going to dwell too much on non-gaming stuff, but suffice to say that the 3300X has a 12% lead in Cinebench over the 3100 in single core performance, rising to 26% over the Ryzen 5 2600, and by extension, Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Um, yeah, in multi-core scores, the lead drops to 11%. Even with its two extra cores and four extra threads, 3300X still delivers 92% of the 2600's multi-core output. In terms of video encoding with H.264, uh, 2600 puts up a great fight and marginally beats the 3300X, but the positions change with HEVC encoding, which is more reliant on AVX instructions, where Zen 2 has a big advantage over the Zen Plus architecture. Strong numbers overall, I'd say. But before we go on, I don't think it's a secret to say that I find the whole concept of CPU reviewing for gameplay problematic. It's really hard to isolate CPU performance in gaming because the GPU is so important, crucially so. Our strategy historically is to run games at 1080p with an RTX 2080 Ti. We try to remove graphics from the equation by giving games a surfeit of power. Also, at this point, the memory you use can also change your performance results. And as you'll see later on, this can be crucial. To cut a long story short, CPU reviewing is complicated. But we can get some idea of scalability in our test scenario here by benching at different resolutions. And when you do this, you get some interesting insights into how you should balance your system. Let's take the Ryzen 3 3300X as an example here. We know that Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a CPU and GPU mangler at ultra-high settings, so check this out. You'll see that there is a gap between 1080p and 1440p performance. 1080p is obviously faster until you encounter big open areas. 
where everything closes up. It's reasonable to assume that when 1080p and 4040p lines here intersect, we're actually CPU limited at both resolutions. Yes, you can be CPU bound at 1440p on a 2080 Ti. It's actually quite easy. You'll also note that this is accompanied by ginormous levels of stutter. Running at 4K restores graphics as the primary limiting factor. And while frame rates are lower, stutter is gone. The green line there is far more consistent. Now, this is a pretty extreme example, but it's really a bad idea generally to run an unbalanced system where your CPU can't power the GPU effectively. So yeah, don't skimp on your CPU. Don't leave GPU processing power on the table. That stutter is not pretty. Okay, so let's get on with some actual testing. First of all, I want to say that both of these CPUs are very, very good. AMD's current best quad-core chip is the Ryzen 5 3400G APU. Four cores, eight threads, just like the new offerings, but based on an older architecture and with far less cache. Ashes of the Singularity has an actual CPU benchmark that doesn't really touch the GPU at all. And based on my conversations with the developer, it's actually based on proper gameplay scenarios. The only difference being that units don't get destroyed. So this kind of adds to the CPU workload. This benchmark also saturates as many cores and threads as it can. And here we find that the 3100 is about 4% faster than 3400G, while the 3300X storms ahead with a 26% lead. Interestingly, Ryzen 5 2600 sits between the two new Ryzen 3s. Okay, so why have I included that chip at all? Well, here's the thing, the 2600 offers more cores and is priced at 33x money. But AMD also released the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which is essentially the same thing and costs just $85. We don't have that chip in-house, but its uncannily similar performance level to the 2600 we do have has been confirmed by every review out there pretty much, including sites whose benchmarks I trust, uh, sites like Gamers Nexus, for example. So yeah, food for thought, right? Because AMD is going for the value crown here when some might say that the 1600 AF is pretty much unbeatable. Crisis 3 thrives on both cores and frequency. 3100 beats 3400G by 7%, while the 3300X is 20 points to the better. Again though, Ryzen 5 2600, intriguing. It's slightly faster than the 3100 in terms of average frame rates and actually slower than the 3300X. Thing is, the 2600 has the best lowest 1% scores by quite a margin. Crisis loves cores and I think the scores here flatter to deceive with Ryzen 3, despite a relatively impressive showing overall. Far Cry 5 ends this particular round of testing, but we will be returning to it a bit later on. This is a canned benchmark run, and I'm usually quite suspicious of those, as I've said, but I'm happy to use this one because it highlights how the junior engine loves single core performance. The new Ryzen 3s monster the old 3400G. The 3100 has a remarkable 15% lead, rising to 32 points with the 3300X. It also shows the Ryzen 5 2600 losing ground. It's actually a touch slower than the 3100. But remember, you will get very similar performance from that cheaper 1600 AF because it's basically the same product. So look, I'm going to be returning to these games later. And uh, there, I'm going to test the new Ryzen 3s against Core i7 7700K. A few years back, that was a $350 processor. And today, AMD is hinting that you're getting the same gaming performance at like a third of the price. For the next round of testing, we're swapping out the less capable 3400G for something a bit more challenging to our new arrivals. The Ryzen 5 3600X, six cores, 12 threads like the 2600, but with all of those lovely Zen 2 modifications, higher clocks, and that huge L3 cache. Now, I think you can just buy the 3600, to be honest, as it's only ever so slightly slower than the X. So let's begin with a look at Kingdom Come Deliverance. On the one hand, it's a nightmarish stutter fest when you're CPU limited. I mean, check out that frame time graph there. It's horrendous. But crunching the numbers, the 3300X has 92% of the performance of the 3600X. And there's only a 5% variance in the lowest 1% of frame times. That's pretty good. All told, the Ryzen 3 3100 is effectively on par with the 2600, but its lowest 1% scores are worse. 
Metro Exodus next and some interesting results. There's clear delineation here across a lot of the benchmark with 3300X and 3600X effectively on par. 3300 a good chunk worse off and 2600 just beneath that. We hit far more of a CPU bottleneck towards the end of the bench, but regardless, across the whole thing, the 3600X is only 2% ahead of 3300X, while the 3100 is essentially on par with 2600. We'll end with The Witcher 3, with the same grouping of four processors. 3600X has just a four-point lead over the 3300X across the length of the bench, and variation in its lowest 1% scores is just a four-point difference there. I've got to admit, that's much better than I expected. The Witcher 3, it loves bandwidth, it uses all cores, it likes clocks. I expected a wider margin. However, the Ryzen 5 2600 and by extension that super cheap 1600 AF, it is effectively on par with the 3100. So I wanted to circle back to some of the games I tested earlier, but this time with a new entry in the stack, the Core i7 7700K. 4 cores, 8 threads, all core turbo of 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, that's at stock speeds of course. Back in the day a $350 processor, but these days a very similar product will enter Intel's 10th core Comet Lake lineup. Effectively the 7700K can work as a preview of sorts for what the 10th gen core i3 will deliver, and AMD itself reckons that the 3300X is ready to take it on. Unfortunately, I don't have any 9th gen i3s in the office here. Intel doesn't tend to sample review units for those, but the current i3s are quad-core chips without the hyper-threading of the 7700K. They will be worse. So let's dip into some results here. The Ashes of the Singularity CPU bench sees the 3300X on level ground with the 7700K, but that's with 3600 memory on both processors. Now running this on the Intel chip is no problem if you have an overclocking centric Z board, but if you don't, 2666 MHz DDR4 is your limit, and there I found the 7700K outgunned by Ryzen. 3600 MHz DDR4, it isn't cheap, but here's the thing, 3000 MHz DDR4 is basically entry level cheap stuff now. There's no need to go cheaper than that for Ryzen, whereas if you don't have a Z board with Intel, you'll need to limit bandwidth. This gives the win to Ryzen 3 3300X, though I've got to admit the 3100 score is a little lackluster by comparison. Remarkably, in Crisis 3, the 3300X inches ahead of the 7700K when both processors are equipped with 3600 MHz DDR4. Intel doesn't lose much with a drop to 2666, but the 3300X with 3000 MHz memory is still faster. At this point, the 3300X is keeping up with the 7700K at stock settings. Even the 3100 is only 12 to 13% behind. This is really a good showing for AMD. Ryzen doesn't have it all its own way, however. As I said earlier, Far Cry 5's junior engine primarily thrives on single thread performance. With matched 3600 MHz DDR4, i7-7700K is 12% faster and it takes that drop to 2666 MHz RAM to see the i7 reach the same level of performance. So I'd say that Intel still has a profound single core performance lead for games that really need that. But perhaps the amount of modern games that will actually see this manifest to a significant level. Minimal to say the least I'd say. So let's get some conclusions together. I'm still of the mind that the Ryzen 5 3600, the non-X model, is probably the best mainstream gaming processor on the market right now, at least until the new i5s come along. I mean, on paper, they look pretty awesome. But the Ryzen 3 3300X outperformed my expectations and got closer than expected to the 3600X. You're getting about 90% of its gaming performance, sometimes higher and only rarely lower. I still think the Ryzen 5's extra cores will offer more future-proofing as we transition into the new era of gaming. So I guess the recommendation there will come down to real-life pricing. And there have been some really nice 3600 deals in recent times. To my mind, the Ryzen 3 3100 is a bit more problematic. I guess it is close to the 3300X, in line with the differential in boost frequencies a lot of the time. However, bargain basement Ryzen 5 2600s, and especially the 1600 AF, well, I'd take 6 cores and 12 threads in that case. 
More cores typically translates into smoother, more consistent performance, even if it's not quite higher performance. And in a world where you really should be more GPU limited than CPU limited, I think that has more value. Still though, vice versa's performance on the 3100, not bad. And you know, it's a clean sweep for AMD in terms of what budget processors you should be considering. So that's where I'm leaving things for now. I hope you like this one. Please do like and subscribe to support the work. Ring the bell for instant notifications when we post new video content. And yes, of course, for those that love what we do and want to support the team more directly, please consider the DF Patreon. Your support matters in making this whole thing viable. And for your trouble, you'll get pristine quality video downloads of everything we do. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this one. If indeed you did, and just generally, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.